Hello everyone, this is Lockout S, and today's video is going to be a Smart Shopper's Guide to DCS World. I wanted to create this video uh, to basically as an introduction to how to buy modules in DCS World, not in the fact of like, oh, like how do I go to the store and like purchase it, but how to think about what to purchase, as well as giving some information and ideas to first-time buyers of DCS World. But I also want to create this video sort of as a guide also for people who are who might own a couple of modules to go in and go, okay, give me some ideas for a thought process to buy my next module. So, first thing to note is for all you new people, what comes with the game for free? Uh, things First thing that comes with the game for free is the TF-51D Mustang. This is a trainer variant of the Mustang. Uh, I believe it is uh, fully... Uh, it's, it's a fully fledged uh, cockpit with fully simulated um, full fidelity cockpit, but it lacks uh, internal we it lacks weapons. The paid 51D Mustang is the Mustang variant that you want to use if you actually want to use uh, use it for combat fun. If you want to use it for combat for World War II, uh, it has the 50 cals and the wings, and it has the uh, ordnance racks and rails for rockets and bombs. The next uh, aircraft that's for free, and this is probably the more important one, because it fits more with the DCS timeline, is the Su-25T Frogfoot. This is the Russian answer to the A-10C Warthog, and it has an internal gun, a huge range of air-to-ground ordnance, both guided and unguided, including weapons to target SAM systems with uh, anti-radiation missiles. Um, it also has uh, self-defense missiles too for air-to-air -air use. Although it's not an air to, it's no by no means a dogfighter. It does at least have the capability to protect itself. Plus, is ECM pods, and again, plenty of air-to-ground ordnance, extra fuel tanks, gun pods. Uh, is a very good introductory aircraft to DCS world. Uh, it is a Flaming Cliffs three mo uh, level aircraft. So you're not going to have a clickable cockpit, and the systems aren't going to be too entirely fully uh, fleshed out. But it's a great aircraft to get into DCS World. It's still well simulated in terms of like what you would reasonably expect an aircraft like this to perform. Um, still great aircraft, lots of fun to fly. Um, and a fun fact, this aircraft was for the longest time our only seat aircraft in DCS World. Now, before I go on to the free maps, I do want to point out that you can download um, separately mod aircraft that are free. Uh, there are plenty of beautiful mod aircraft out there. I know the F-104 Starfighter is a fairly popular mod. Uh, the recently released F-4B and C Phantoms, uh, the older variants of the Phantoms that uh, were that we're not getting from Heepler. We're getting from Heepler the F-4E Phantom. For, and that's a whole other video topic later about the Phantom. Uh, but my personal recommendation, and one that is very much beloved by pretty much everyone in the community, is the A4E Skyhawk. Uh, highly recommend this mod for multiple reasons for a free aircraft. First off, it's free. I want to keep on driving it at point home because even the devs themselves are very insistent on uh, reinforcing the idea that this is a free aircraft and it shall be forever remain a free aircraft for as a mod, um, <clears throat> but like the A, but like the, but like, but like with the Su twenty five T, huge range of ground uh, air uh, ordnance, uh, not a lot of guided ordnance, but still you have a lot of you have a huge range of um, ordnance for use against ground targets, plus you have self uh, defense air missiles. Plus, you have missiles that are used to target uh, SAM radars. So those are the seed weapons. Uh, plus, some, some very unique weapons like uh, gun pods. So you can have total... Uh, one of my things I want to try, for instance, is you can have three gun pods plus these internal guns. And I should mention it also, the A4E has internal guns. <coughs> so that's something that this aircraft has. Plus, it has the capability for air-to-air -air refueling. Plus, it's a naval aircraft... So you can fly it off a carrier for free, which is uh, something you're not going to be able to do with the Su-25T. And unlike the Su-25T, it is a fully simulated cockpit. 
And it has a lot of, and this is also something I would highly recommend you download in general, even if you plan on uh, getting a paid module later, because a lot of the fully modeled systems in here actually do carry over to aircraft, um, other aircraft in, this, in the game that are, are, are that are that belong to NATO, because you have things like the TACAN system, which is a uh, which is a nav air air rat navigation radar, uh, no, sorry, air navigation radio that a lot of NATO aircraft of later generations have. So, fully fleshed out cockpit, fully clickable cockpit, fully fleshed out systems, a lot of unique weapons, highly awesome mod, highly recommend that you consider picking this up and add this to your collection of uh, free aircraft that you can get for the game. Uh, so, with, so with downloading this, um, and with two other aircraft you get for free, you'll have a total of three aircraft. Um, On to maps. Uh, maps are something that you do have to buy, but you do get two maps for free. Uh, the Caucasus map. Beautiful map. Actually one of my favorite maps in game. Uh, mainly because it has four seasons, so you have spring, summer, and then, which are sort of similar, but you have fall, um, the beautiful fall foliage, and you have winter with actual, like, snow. So, uh, the Caucasus map, uh, you can definitely have, you have four seasons, uh, a lot of air bases. Uh, if you own Soviet aircraft, the Caucasus map is probably the best, because especially for the MiG-21, I believe the MiG-21 has... Uh, navigational equipment that are only works on the Caucasus. Uh, it's not like you can't navigate on the other maps, it's just it has special equipment that only the Caucasus is set up with. Uh, also, Caucasus, a lot of content made up for it. Also free is the Marianas map. Uh, this is a something that you will have to go to the module manager and download separately, but it does come with the game for free. And not a lot of terrain. This is that obviously, as the Marianas is an island chain, not a lot of um, it's not a lot of space on the ground because they're tiny little Pacific islands, but lots of beautiful, well detailed islands. So there is the fact that they are be very well detailed, very beautiful, uh, really cool jungle terrain to fly over, uh, and some and actually a lot of their bigger cities on these islands are fairly well detailed with unique buildings, and that's something you don't see. It's something that the DCS is doing recently, but the older maps don't quite have that to the same extent that newer ones do. So, DCS Marianas, beautiful map, great for carrier ops, especially if you bought the, especially if you downloaded the A4E Skyhawk for free, you can use one of the free carriers, use the free Skyhawk, go floating around these, um, go flying around these tropical islands, pretend, uh, pretend it's Vietnam, like a lot of uh, video editors do. Tons of fun, highly recommend. Now, uh, I wouldn't rec so I would at the very least download DC the download DCS for free, download any mod aircraft that you want for free, play around with that for a, for at least a day or two. Um, play around with DCS, get to know it, uh, experiment with it, have fun with it for free. Um, next step is uh, if you look, uh, it's, especially if you really like one of the module aircraft that are down here. Uh, Next step is to pick one of these out, uh, or even a series of these out if you want to start breaking up your wallet uh, big time. Uh, highly recommend that if you love an aircraft, get it. Uh, if you really love the Tomcat, get the Tomcat. If you really love the Viper, get the Viper. If you really love the I-16, get the I-16. Uh, your passion for an aircraft will help you push through both the easy parts, but more importantly, it'll help you push through the more difficult systems that you might not quite understand at first, but if you love flying the aircraft, it'll eventually come to you. Uh, there's plenty of DCS resources for learning aircraft. Uh, I'm going to actually have another, I, I think by the time this video comes out or the next video comes out, I will have a video just dedicated to where to find resources to learn aircraft, uh, so don't worry about that. Uh, your passion will help you get through the tough times of learning aircraft for the first time. Plus, um, if you stick to NATO or you stick to Warsaw Pack aircraft, uh, a lot of systems kind of uh, go with like that that faction. So if you learn if you learn the systems of like basically the Tomcat, uh, you'll find that 
a lot of the navigation and like weapon systems are very similar in their employment and use on the Viper, the Hornet, so on and so forth. So that is something to keep in mind that if you're with DCS and pushing, you really, you really do need the motivation to push through that first um, phase of learning. But if you have a couple of aircraft that you really love, or you're not, or you know you want to really fly an aircraft, but you're not sure which one. I have some tips for you to narrow down your selection of aircraft to something a bit more, or uh, a more of a reasonable amount of aircraft to then pick your final one from. If not, narrow it down to the one or two that you're going to get. First thing to note, DCS aircraft uh, can be roughly divided into three eras. Uh, I-16, like I, aircraft like the I-16 and uh, the F-86 F Sabre, uh, are part of the first era, which is what I consider World War II and Korea. I generally lop these two together mainly because uh, uh, they occur very. Uh, obviously, the end of World War Two and uh, leading of the Korean War actually wasn't that far apart from each other, and they're keep and obviously the Korean era jets are more way more capable than their World War Two counterparts, but in terms of systems and even some of the weapons they had, they're very similar. You're only going to have, you're going to have mostly uh, air-to-air -air guns only. Um, you might be lucky if you get some kind of eh, air-to-air -air rockets that you can kind of throw at the enemy if you want to, like, be bold about it. Um, the other thing is that these, uh, the, that these Korean and World War II aircraft, uh, you're going to need to pick up some other things and some more unique things in order to make them really like shine and make sense. So that's kind of why I love these two into one uh, pack. But the FC, uh, you can't actually fly uh, Cold War, uh, these very, very early Cold War aircraft, the DCS, as well as World War II. as one era. The next era is sort of like the mid-Cold War. And you're going to have aircraft like your F-5E Tiger II and your MiG-21s. Uh, these are going to be your more, you're starting to actually get uh, missiles implemented more frequently. Uh, you're going to have like radar, a little bit better radar systems, uh, early unguided, early guided air to ground weapons, stuff like that. Um, that's another era. Uh, this era is probably best uh, represented by Enigma's Cold War server. Uh, the list of aircraft there are very indicative of which aircraft you're going to be having. Um, in this like mid cold mid mid early cold war time frame um and the last time frame uh is late cold war to modern so those are your aircraft like your f-14s uh especially that variant of the f-14 we have in game which is uh f4 the f-14b variant and the late f-14as uh hornets and vipers are very much super modern aircraft in this time frame so they fit very well into the modern cold war um and there are plenty of servers that cater to this. Uh, there's different levels of the late Cold War also. You could really go into the details of, like, um, for instance, uh, my favorite server, uh, Flashpoint Levant, ha is very much 80s Cold War, which is late Cold War. Uh, so you do have things like laser-guided bombs, Tomcats, Vipers, Hornets, but you're not going to have them at their full capacity. They're only going to be able to carry, for instance, like laser-guided bombs. So late Cold War... Right now is where DCS has a lot, has like the most range of aircraft, but do keep your eye out for mid Cold War and Vietnam era. Uh, that is growing, and there's quite a large list of aircraft coming in for that era. So there is that to consider. World War Two and Korea era and DCS doesn't get a whole lot of love, but it uh, it is pretty fun. Uh, point number two. Uh, most fighter aircraft in DCS are good at both air-to-air -air and air, and are decent at air-to-ground, but air-to-ground focus aircraft uh, are really only good on the air-to-ground role. So, if you're if you're kind of want if you're kind of sort of in the middle of the ground, especially if it's your very first aircraft, and you're kind of thinking, eh, I want to do a little bit of air-to-air, -air, I want to do a little bit of air-to-ground, I'm not quite sure which. Uh, definitely pick something like the F-16C Viper or the uh, F-18C Hornet, or even the F-14B Tomcat, where you do have the uh, the flexibility to of uh, both air to air and air to ground missions. Um, if you really want to do air to ground and like you are pretty determined, like hey, 
I mostly or pretty much predominantly only want to do air to ground. Uh, then go for air to ground air focus aircraft like the A10C Warthog, the uh, AV8B Harrier. Vigan, uh, I do want to point out, Vigan's a little bit of an odd duck in this. Uh, late Cold War and like even mid Cold War, it's good. It's spe It's really only focused on air to ground. But you can use the Vigan, even though it's considered a ground attack variant, uh, in air to air with uh, its ability to use six uh, heat seeking Mariner missiles. So, a little bit of a curveball with that one, but generally speaking, uh, air, if you want to, if you only want to do air to ground, uh, you might as well then go ahead and go for a full um, attack aircraft. But if you even want to do like a moderate bit of air to air, go for a fighter style aircraft. Point number three, uh, if you love naval aviation, uh, you actually have several options. Uh, excuse me there, I had to clear my nose so I can actually breathe and talk. Uh, if you listen to what I said before, um, A4E, Community Skyhawk Module, naval it's a naval aircraft. Um, other naval aircraft include, technically speaking, the Harrier as a jump jet. I do believe the Marines operate these off of carriers as, um, or landing assault ships. It's a bit of a weird classification, but there are uh, countries that use this, use this as a naval aircraft. F-14B, you have your Hornet, you have your uh, Su-33D Flanker, which is a flaming quiz for your aircraft. I'll cover that in a little bit. Um, so you do actually have quite a few options for naval aircraft including the upcoming F-4U Corsair One for World War II, and the A-7 Corsair II, which is a late Cold War uh, fighter uh, ground attack aircraft. However, uh, especially for the, uh, the modern uh, NATO aircraft for carrier-based operations, uh, you'll want to consider picking up the supercarrier. Now, carriers don't operate off of this, but the F-18C Hornets and F-14 Tomcats do operate off of a... a um, carrier like this um there are two free carriers in game the forestall which is more suited to the tomcat uh you also have a free um nimbus class carrier for use um the super carrier module adds a lot of nice features though for carrier operations um uh, including moving deck crew um a bit more detail on the actual carrier uh stuff like that um Highly recommend if you already own naval um, aviation assets, like if you already own like, the Tomcat or the Hornet, um, and you're looking for something, uh, can't go wrong to think of the supercarrier. Also to note, um, it's very common for the supercarrier to be bundled with either the Hornet or the Tomcat in a sale. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and also note that the supercarrier is still in active development. They are actually doing things to it to improve it. So uh, it's not just uh, movable people on the ground, on the deck. It's plenty of other things. Next up is, speaking of optional things you could buy to enhance your experience, uh, like how Naval Aviation with the Hornet and the Tomcat uses the supercarrier for extra fun time, uh, Korean and especially World War II aircraft need what's called the World War II Assets Pack in order to really get the most use out of those aircraft. Um, base DCS does not have World War II assets, or at the very least, not very many World War II assets. Um, a lot of the campaigns that are World War II based also require the World War II Assets Pack. Um, it's something that I would only really pick up on a sale uh, unless you really love World War II and you want to get into DCS World War II, uh, I wouldn't buy. Uh, I wouldn't buy the assets pack for full price. I would for sale and pick it up. However, the good news is with the asset pack, every once in a while they'll add more items to it. So it's not like uh, it's a, it's not like it's getting it's not like it's stale in that sense. And uh, you can use another module uh, that I'll talk about later to drive around those vehicles on the map. Uh, point number five, 
Uh, maps are a good idea. Um, you could either I would um, maps I would recommend picking up uh, either as part of a first buy, or if you have quite a few modules and you're missing a map or two. Um, maps give you access to online servers, um, but they also give you access to single player content. So, highly recommend picking them up. Uh, of the maps in game, uh, Channel in Normandy are World War II era maps, and oddly, they both cover basically almost the same area of the world, uh, which is Southeast England and then North, uh, a bit of Northern uh, Europe, like France, between like France and uh, the Netherlands. France, Netherlands, uh, Oh, I'm quite sure I'm going to get a bunch of British YouTubers yelling at me at this, I think, or European YouTubers yelling at me at this. I think they're called um, the Lowlands or the Low Country. Uh, like, it's uh, Belgium, Netherlands, Denmark, like that area of the world. Um, so, those two, like, a Normandy and Channel map, they cover, like, sort of, like, that area of the world. Um, they're, it's mostly only for, like, again, World War Two. You could theoretically have, like, uh, F-86 Sabres flying around as a free flight, like, as a post-war uh, patrol, but they're not really meant for that. What you're really, uh, for the majority of you players, what you really want to focus on on maps is either Syria or Persian Gulf. Um, there's a lot of content for both of these maps. A lot of servers also use these maps. And... They'll also provide a desert-like terrain for flying around in. Um, there's a lot of desert terrain coming up for uh, in DCS World, but uh, Syria and Persian Gulf are both good choices for a map. Uh, there's a lot of combat operations. A lot of servers use them. There is the Normandy map. I would give this map a hard pass unless you want to use it, unless you have, um, like, for whatever reason, a burning passion, like, you live in Nevada, um, or like you live in the NTTR range, or you want to use the multitude of training campaigns, because you can buy uh, campaigns that are like red flag exercises, um, and they'll use this map. So there is use to this map. It's not entirely useless, but I wouldn't pay full price for this map. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily make this map a high priority, because it's, it's not abandoned wear by DCS, but... Um, DCS really hasn't put in the effort to um, updating this map, unlike Caucasus. Um, also, I should probably mention I just did skip over a map. Um, South Atlantic is interesting. Um, not a bad map. It's actually pretty interesting. It's a really unique um, section of the world. A lot of unique, really, a lot of unique terrain to fly over. Not a lot of um, airports to fly off of. And the map is still kind of a bit in development. Um, definitely beautiful. Um, if you like long flights, uh, definitely get this map. Because there is a large area of the map that where, where there's no airports. So, a lot of fun. Um, but I would recommend for your first map either Persian Gulf or Syria. The upcoming Sinai map also looks good. But... It's going to be a while before multiplayer servers get up and running on that, and content is created by the community. So, next thing to note is Combined Arms. Um, combined Arms is fun. Uh, it's another thing I wouldn't pick up uh, for full price. I would wait for a sale for Combined Arms. Um, Combined Arms basically allows you to either act as a ground commander, commanding groups of ground units, or it allows you actually to get into the unit and drive it around and fire the guns and destroy ground units as a ground unit yourself. This is something I would recommend if you uh, get a helicopter module, because certain helicopter modules are allowed uh, on certain multiplayer servers. Um, you can have a lot of fun picking up ground units dropping them off in an area, deploying them, and then switching over to combined arms and actually driving around those ground units, destroying and destroying enemy units and causing mayhem. Combined arms, like I said, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, it is a lot of silly fun. 
but uh, I wouldn't recommend paying full price for it. Um, it's a kind of another one of those older modules that DC DCS made, and they've done some things to it, but not a whole lot with it yet. Um, and like I said, it works well with other modules, especially helicopter modules on online servers. So just something to keep in mind. And oh, before I get off the topic of combined arms, um, you can actually use this module to great effect on multiplayer servers where you can basically act as a uh, JTAC for uh, fellow players. And basically what a JTAC is, to make it real quick, is your guy on the ground, you have a laser pointer, and you can use that laser pointer to point out units on the ground to guide uh, laser-guided weapons onto them. So help out the guys in the air, find targets, and coordinate attacks on targets from there. So it's a fun module, but not super useful, and I wouldn't recommend getting it uh, for DCS uh, as your first module. Uh, what I would recommend, however, you getting for your first module is a series of aircraft known as the Flaming Cliffs Pack. Uh, it'll be under F. There we go. So, Flaming Cliffs 3 comes, comes, uh, gives you access to six aircraft. Um, you can buy these aircraft individually, but you're going to get a way better deal buying them as a bundle underneath Flaming Cliffs 3. And if you can get the Flaming Cliffs 3 itself at a discount, you can pick up potentially six aircraft for like basically dollars a piece. Um, Flaming Cliffs 3 aircraft are like the SU-25T in their um, fidelity. Uh, their fidelity, their, that being non-clickable cockpit, uh, basic systems modeling, not something, uh, decent flights, uh, decent flight modeling, uh, decent weapons modeling. Uh, they're not super complicated aircraft, uh, or not su and not super uh, involved, but um, they're still fairly accurate to like their performance in real life, and you can still have a lot of fun flying around, getting to getting the use. Getting used to the ideas of how to fight in the sim, and you get access to actually quite a range of aircraft. Um, on the NATO side, you get access to the A 10 A Warthog, which is the earlier version of the Warthog, and you get access to the F 16 no, the F 15 C Eagle. You also gain access to a lot of Russian aircraft, and that's the main reason you want to get Flaming Cliffs 3, because you get access to the Su 27 Flanker. SU-33 Flanker D, which is the naval flanker. Uh, you also get access to uh, the MiG-29, and, uh, and you get three variants from that. You get access to the MiG-29A, G, and I believe S, and then you also get access to the SU-25A. So, fun aircraft. Um, it's a fun pack. Highly recommend it all for your first pack of aircraft just because of the wide range of aircraft you get access to. Especially if you want Soviet aircraft, um, because late Soviet, late generation Soviet aircraft, uh, due to various political and technical reasons, are nearly impossible to simulate. That's mainly because of, well, mainly political. <laughs> uh, last thing to note uh, before I get into the next step is for filtering out your for filtering aircraft is I want to give a special call to helicopters. Uh, there are quite a few in game, and they're coming up with more and more and more. Uh, they're fun for chill flying, uh, especially in some of the more uh, newer uh, some of, some of the newer maps. Uh, taking a helicopter around like the Huey, flying it around the city, lots of fun. Uh, they're a really big challenge. Uh, really in-depth challenge, but you can do a whole lot of fun stuff with them. Especially on online servers, uh, a lot of servers have special rules and special abilities that only helicopters can do, like inserting ground troops, inserting uh, ground vehicles, and you could really change the tide, tide of battle with just flying helicopters. And those are the uh, points I wanted to make. Um, with like helping you to uh, uh, filter out your modules, your choice of modules. Uh, so it's like uh, so. Lots of fun choices. Uh, again, don't uh, 
don't leave out helicopters. Uh, they are helicopters are difficult to learn, but a lot of fun. Uh, again, keep in mind your errors of the aircraft. Uh, what care? What uh, if you want to use naval operations to carry your aircraft? Lots of fun things to choose from. Uh, there's, they, this guy could go on for hours going over like individual modules. What's worth it? What's not worth? What what? Uh, what's worth it for this situation? What's not worth it for that situation? But we're gonna move on to what happens after you pick out the aircraft that you want to um, buy, or at least come up with a list of aircraft that you really are certain that you want to buy. After you've um, used all of that information to pick out, like pick out which aircraft that you want to get. Uh, the next step is to actually go onto the main DCS website, uh, log in, go to the eShop, and then in the eShop, you actually want to find the modules that you wanted to uh, buy, but you're not going to buy them. You're going to be smart. You're going to go ahead and use the free trial program. The free trial program allows you to download any module for a two-week period for free, and basically... Experiment with it. Uh, fly with it. Have um, fly with it. Learn all the modules. Get access to all the missions. All that fun stuff. Uh, I highly recommend. Like I said, I cannot highly recommend this enough. Use the free trial program to um, experiment with a module um, before you pay full price for it. Um, and you're not gonna. And I will also mention that uh, the next in the next step, you don't want to pay full price for a module, anyways. But you especially don't want to do that uh, until unless you free unless you've given the module a trial. Um, note that with the trial, there are two sort of downsides. Uh, one, brand new aircraft to DCS don't usually get trial programs. Uh, you're gonna have to, if it's a brand new aircraft, you're just gonna have to pay full price for it. Um, or would have or would have had to pre-order it beforehand, so that is kind of a bit of a downside there. Uh, the other downside is if you do uh, down if you do free trial a module, uh, you cannot re you cannot get another free two weeks of that module or another six months. So you could theoretically free trial the Hornet for two months. Uh, for uh, you could free trial the Hornet for two weeks. Um, and then you'll have to wait to you'll have to wait six months or half a year in order to free trial it again for two weeks. But then the next two weeks you could free trial the Viper. And you could tr free trial multiple aircraft all at once. Um, but obviously, especially if you're playing for free and you're trying to play them as a, and you're trying to like, kind of like milk the system a little bit, um, don't get multiple aircraft unless you have the intent. To buy one of them, or else you'll just end up um, burning through all your free trials with nothing to um, show for it. Um, but that's not going to be. But price isn't going to be a horrendously huge factor, um, anyways, in DCS. Um, and I say that knowing that, like, yes, the modules are expensive. But the next point is, and I want to make, and this is kind of a big one, is. Don't ever pay full price for a module. You'll want to always be um, on the lookout for sales. And they actually happen way more often than you, th you would think. Um, I often joke with some of my uh, big time, long time DCS fans that uh, blink and there's a, a DCS sale. Um, it's not uncommon for DCS to have seemingly multiple sales back to back. Uh, I would probably say the second half of the year between uh, the time in between October and February, uh, because of all the holidays, DCS pretty much seems to have a sale nonstop between like the Halloween sale, New Year's sale, Christmas sale, winter sale. But uh, I even believe they do a Chinese New Year sale, spring sale for March. Uh, there are a lot of sales in DCS world, and I would, I would keep the, I would uh, use the two week free trials to try to trial and try a different whole bunch of different aircraft, 
in addition to using the free mods and the free aircraft included in the game, to hold yourself over until the sale comes out. Because it's more than likely going to be the case that you're not going to be waiting more than two to three months, worst case, for a sale. Um, so definitely always use the sales to your advantage. Um, the sales also sometimes come with bundles. Um, the Super Carrier module and the F-18C Hornet is a fairly common bundle that they release. Um, but also keep in mind that there's other bundles for other occasions, like there's a World War. Sometimes they might do a World War II bundle, um, stuff like that. Uh, and that's pretty much it for um, my smart shoppers. My smart shoppers guide. Uh, to just go over quickly from the, over the top, uh, from the top down. Uh, DCS has free content, uh, so make sure you don't have to buy. You don't have to spend a single penny if you don't want to. Um, you can also uh, download free mod aircraft to extend uh, the amount of aircraft that you, ha that you can fly around for free. Um, other than that, uh, when it comes to selecting your aircraft, uh, there's a whole bunch of criteria to pick from. Uh, just try to pick up. Just try to stick to your the aircraft that you know you're going to love and fly a lot, especially if you're starting out DCS for the first time. Um, and then. Basically, free trial all the aircraft that you've narrowed. You take your list that you've narrowed down, give them all a two-week free trial, and then wait for a sale. And that's pretty much it for shopping in DCS. There's a whole bunch of minutia, and I could literally go on for hours over like why you should get like this X module over Y module. And honestly, the amount of times I've seen in the community do this, where the internal debate for Hoggett is, should I get the Hornet? Or the Viper, that seems to be a weekly, if not sometimes every other day occurrence that that's posted. Uh, I could probably even do a meme video discussing F sixteen and F eighteen differences for uh, DCS world, but I'm gonna try to keep this video short and to the point. So, in as much as it can be for DCS world, uh, this is very involved. So be prepared to spend. Yeah, some money, but also a lot of time. Um, oh, and one last thing I should mention before I call, uh, before I sign off. Um, definitely, after you get your first module, uh, I would probably say for your first recommend, uh, my first recommended buys are one module, maybe one map. Um, don't be afraid after that to stick to that one module for a while and focus on upgrading your PC's uh, peripherals and even the PC itself. Um, DCS really needs its own dedicated SSD. Uh, DCS installs can get around half a, uh, half a terabyte, uh, especially with upcoming modules and maps and stuff. So get yourself a good SSD and get yourself a decent HOTAS setup and that'll go, that'll be money well spent. Um, as opposed to trying to fly a whole bunch of really advanced modules of just your mouse and keyboard. So keep that also in mind. And with that last bit of wisdom out of the way, this is Lock OS signing out.